Hi everyone, I'm Ava and today I'm going to tell you five things that I really love about living in the Netherlands. But before I go into these five things, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of background about myself. And I promise, it's just a little bit, teeny, teeny, teeny little bit. So let's get to it. I met my girlfriend who is Dutch in 2016, so about four years ago in the US when we were studying together. Since then, I visited the Netherlands about twice a year and we would actually spend full summers in the Netherlands. And in 2019, I decided to take the leap and move here permanently. My girlfriend was still in the US at the time, so I actually moved here by myself and she later joined me earlier this year. I wanted to share some things that I really noticed when I would visit the Netherlands that made me want to move here permanently. And I've continued to notice these things now that I actually live here. Now, I must say, I have more than five things if you talk to me, but I decided to pick the things that really stood out to me as an American and these are pretty big things, at least in my opinion. So let's get to it. Thing number one. So I just mentioned that I moved to the Netherlands right before my girlfriend did. So there was a period of time when I was here by myself. And what I was really surprised by is the sheer number of her friends who contacted me to make sure that I was settling in properly. So they would contact me for coffee or to get dinner or to just hang out. And I was really touched by it. And I'm not trying to say that in America, people aren't nice, but this is an extra level of thoughtfulness. So yes, my thing number one is that Dutch people are actually really thoughtful. And I know I sound really surprised, but I think that's just because this is one of those things that I saw a little bit before actually moving here. But once I moved here, I was completely overwhelmed by it in the most positive way. And I should say that in the US, it's not that people won't check in with you, but they don't go that extra mile to, you know, ask you for a coffee or to meet up, mostly because people don't have time and are working themselves away. But that's a point I will get to in a little bit. So that was one way in which I noticed how thoughtful Dutch people were. But there's another thing that really stands out to me and it has to do with birthdays. Now, Dutch birthdays are a whole, a whole other video. So when it comes to birthdays, Dutch people are ridiculously thoughtful. Ridiculously in the best way. The Dutch have a tried and true method of keeping track of people's birthdays and that's by having a actual birthday calendar. So a calendar where they just write down when people were born. So many of my girlfriend's friends actually have my birthday on their calendar, which I find so touching. It's like, oh my God, that's when you know you really made it into a Dutch person's heart when you have made it onto their birthday calendar, which fun fact is in their bathroom. <laughs> I should stop saying in their bathrooms or in you Dutch people's bathrooms because I have one in my bathroom now and that's when I felt really pleased. I was like, this is assimilation into a new culture at its best. I have a freaking birthday calendar in my bathroom. But Dutch people will use this birthday calendar to actually, you know, make sure they wish you on your birthday and here's the best part, send you a card, get you a little present. In the Netherlands, sending cards appears to be just part of everyday life. When my girlfriend started her new job here in the Netherlands, she got a ton of cards from people. And I don't know if that was just because, you know, it's, she got a job in, during the time of the coronavirus situation or if it's really just a part of how Dutch people like to show, their, show that they're thinking about her. I think the thoughtful Dutch people. That is one of my favorite things about living in the Netherlands and this I would say is specific to living in the Netherlands because obviously I'm talking about how awesome Dutch people are. Let's move on to thing number two which is the work-life balance. Oh my God, as an American, work-life balance has to be on this list, right? Because as the world knows, Americans love working. We love, I don't, I think it's some kind of a self-worth thing where we think the more we work, the better, the more we're worth as a person. Now I'm saying this out loud and I realize how crazy that sounds, but it's just true. It's how very many people feel and even if they don't feel that way sometimes 
a person's life situation might make it so that they need to have two or three jobs. But here in the Netherlands, the Dutch mindset is such that work is one part of your life and then there is this whole other aspect of your life outside of work. I mean, can you even imagine life outside of work? What are we talking about? People here ask me what my hobbies are. And in the beginning, I kind of had to like stop and think because in the US, if you had hobbies, that means you were doing things other than work. And that's not cool. That's not okay. But here, Dutch people like to go swimming. Because of course everyone swims. Dutch people like to go outdoors, hiking, biking. Many people have joined a sports club. I am so surprised. Many people in the Netherlands also work part-time. When I was applying for jobs here, I noticed that some jobs specified a 0,6 or 0 0.6 uh, FTE or full-time employment. And I was confused. I didn't know what that meant because I was like, wait, is it full-time or is it not full-time? I don't understand. So I had to ask to find out. And apparently in the Netherlands, it's really common to work 60% of the 40 hours. So it's 24 hours or you can work 0.8, that's another pretty common one. So 32 hours in the week and you work four days a week. I was confused. I was like, why, why, would, what? why would people want this? Isn't this inferior to working full-time? And no, people really want to work part-time so that they can spend time with the kids or do other things, their hobbies, live life. They're not buying into the whole, we need a five-day work week. Now, it's not Sweden where there's a enforced six hour workday, but there it is. There is something to be said about Dutch people opting to work less because they think that's an essential part of life to do other things and not just work the whole time. I cannot talk about this topic without mentioning the holiday days. In the US, you get 10 days, two weeks off. That's really average. If you have more than that, that is phenomenal. And oftentimes people can't even use their holiday days if you work in a really high pressure job, which I'm from New York, I, that's like what, all of Manhattan? Doesn't matter. In the Netherlands, all of that can stay in the US. When you move here, you by law are required to have 20-ish days. I'm gonna specify the exact amount here. You're gonna have 20-ish days of holiday days required by law and then the app, I think many people have 20 to 30 holiday days. So I have 24, my partner has 30. Those are so many days. And I met someone last week who has eight weeks, she told me. And this is not including the national holidays and stuff. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that wanna make you move here just by itself? And then finally, about this work-life balance, I wanna add the one thing that in the US, when you're working or when, when I worked in the US, sending emails or communicating with your employer, like employer-employee relationship, you could communicate with each other throughout the week into the weekends. There isn't this distinction between the work week and the weekends when it comes to doing things like sending work emails. In the Netherlands, I heard from my partner that she would think, twice and feel extremely uncomfortable sending a work email during the weekend. The Dutch people watching my video, what do you think about this? Would you feel uncomfortable sending an email during the weekend if you had an, an idea or a thought related to work? Would you contact your employer? Yeah, let me know because she hasn't lived here in the last five years. So we, we would both really like to know about this. Thing number three, this one might start off a bit funny because I'm going to say I love that I pay high taxes because high taxes equals high reward. I'm going to give some very simple examples about what that's like, what paying low taxes translates to in the US to illustrate my point. So in the US, biking is a, a challenge for many reasons, mostly because people aren't familiar with bikers on the road, but also because there are so many potholes on the street. When I moved to the Netherlands, I could walk without falling. I could bike without fear for my life or without you know being afraid that if I go too fast, I'm gonna get into a pothole and then just <laughs> fly out. Nope. So paying the taxes for maintenance of your country is a fantastic idea. And I also like where the tax money 
goes to. It goes to social benefit. I think having social security because I pay high taxes is amazing. I mentioned in the US, people will work two or three jobs sometimes because their life situation will force them to. Well, in the Netherlands, if you need government help for whatever reason, you can get it as a, as a member of Dutch society. This could not have been more apparent when the corona crisis situation hit. In the Netherlands, many people got 90% of their salaries. Now, I know it's not perfect. There are a lot of issues that go with it and with people getting their money, especially if you're a freelancer. But there, there are still government initiatives. People weren't afraid of ending up on the street homeless. Whereas in the US, it means homelessness. It means not having health insurance if you don't have a job because you don't have social security in the same way. Now, I know Americans might find this a bit too extreme where they say we do have social security, but it is not the same. It is absolutely not the same. Using the coronavirus situation, giving people the one-time or two-time check of a certain amount, that's not going to solve the systemic issues in society. I got really heated up here, but this is so important to me to have this community bond to make sure that everyone is taken care of. And I'm not even talking about just the vulnerable segments of society here. For instance, if you get sick, you being a very average person, get sick, burnouts are a thing. You might be burnt out at work. You might have an illness. And in the US, you will lose your job. If that happens to you, it's a really terrible situation. And then not only are you ill, but on top of it, you have lost your job. Whereas in the Netherlands for two years, you keep your job if you are sick and unable to work full time or unable to work at all. Okay, so I'm going to stop there because I'm getting really, really heated. This is a really important topic to me because I'm um, enraged by the situation in the US for many reasons now. And even just talking about anything to do with the problems there, it really gets to me. And I'm American, so I guess that's not that surprising. But moving on to nicer, more fun things is number four, which is I really moved here for how much history and culture there is all around. When I walk into the city center in Utrecht or honestly any city in the Netherlands, Amsterdam, just what I see is history and culture and beauty. I can be a little superficial that way and I really love how beautiful everything is. I love seeing that the buildings are from you know, centuries ago, from the 1500s, from the 1400s. My apartment building is from the 1500s. I just love it. And you see it in things like the beautiful details on the window, the architecture styles, and just having that kind of old city vibe all around you just adds so much to your life on a daily basis. Like I'm happy when I walk outside my apartment and just go for a walk or a bike ride throughout the city. It's yeah, it's really great. And I say city because I am a city person. It's really hard when you've grown up in New York and Mumbai to not be a city person. But I do love the Dutch countryside too. There are these amazing, gorgeous Dutch houses with like the thatched roof and oh, oh my God, just, I love it. It just adds so much beauty to everyday life. And what is life without beauty? I also want to, of course, mention the Dutch history of art because there's so many Dutch artists and you can learn important figures in Dutch history by kind of learning the street names because they're all named after important figures in Dutch history. You know, there's some problems with that, but we're not going to go into that here. And you can just go to the museums and enjoy Dutch artists. And it's really nice to, so I, as an American, don't have this feeling very often where I go into a museum and see artists from the country that I'm living in. That's a really simple pleasure I find. Whereas now when I go in and I think, oh, this is a Dutch artist, one of like many, many hundreds. And I can say, oh, that's a Dutch artist. And I'm learning something about the place that I lived in. And that just really makes me feel like I'm surrounded by, by beautiful things in history. And of course, have you seen the pretty canals? 
in the Netherlands. Have you seen how beautiful they are? Why wouldn't you want to live here? It is beautiful. You, I honestly have not had very many sad days since I moved. Some sad moments. Sad days, very little. Because when you go outside for a walk, poof, the sadness is gone. Because everything is so beautiful. And you just want to spend all this time in this beauty. Number five is how gezellig the Netherlands is. The Netherlands is a very cozy country. And I love that about the culture and the lifestyle here. So I have another video on uh, some gezellige Dutch things, but I want to just mention that it's the way of life, of making sure that everything is nice and cozy and pleasant that I really like about living here. So, But aside from the things I mentioned in this video, I want to say that I really like the everyday little things that are done to make life cozy and very pleasant. So for instance, I only associate buying flowers in America with a really traditional American family. Whereas here, I mean, people my age just go out, buy flowers, make sure the aesthetics in their house are pretty and nice and warm and welcoming, cozy. It's not just very practical and functional. That's what I associate with the US, but maybe not cozy. You know, like I'm totally buying into making things cozy and nice. And when it comes to cafes, I'm not going to go into a cafe that's not gezellig. And Dutch people know that. They know that Dutch people won't go into a cafe or a restaurant if it's not cozy. So there are like little pillows and blankets everywhere. This whole culture of gezelligheid just speaks to me. And I, yeah, I was sold. And so I moved and now I'm very happy. And this is my happily ever after story. Okay, so I wanted to make this video to, well, celebrate all the awesome things about the Netherlands with the awesome Dutch people watching this video. And I also wanted to make this video for Americans to see what life can look like in a different, uh, in a different country, in a different culture. So if you Dutch people have anything else to add, let me know in the comments.